today I am going to show you my process for changing out the filters in our home water filter system so that hopefully it'll help you change your own. And tip number one, apparently six months notice isn't good enough. So the next time you tell her you're gonna change your filter out, you should probably wait a year before you actually get around to it. That way she has enough notice. Let me just show you what happened. Almost done. What are you doing? Changing the filter today. I haven't even finished cleaning the counter. You won't clean water, don't you? Well, yeah, but you could have warned me you were doing that. Instead of wait till my back is turned. Wait, didn't I tell you I was going to change that six months ago? Six months ago. Okay, so the wife and I were kind of raised in completely different worlds. I was a little five-year-old running around in the woods. If I needed something to drink, I'd go find a stream. And as long as it looked like it wasn't stagnant, I was good to go. I drank from a water hose. Mm -hmm. And here we are on a well. So from my perspective, I look at that like, yes, fresh water, no chemicals and all the other stuff that is basically just recycled pee from the local reclamation facility. Now we technically have two filters on our house. One is just for sediment. I mean, it is a hole in the ground. You're gonna get sand, little pieces of dirt and debris on occasion. For actual drinking water, she wanted to get something that was a step up. Okay, and this is the sediment filter, which comes directly out of the well. And again, this doesn't have any charcoal activation. It's basically nothing but a sediment filter designed to catch things. Now, this may look a little bit horrible, but we've actually only replaced this once since I've been here. So this filter, I wind up changing maybe once every three years, give or take, um, just as it builds up and gets to a deeper level. Yeah, it's just basically mud, sand, the kind of stuff you get from rock uh, as it decomposes and the sediment washes bits and pieces of the rock out. It, 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 they call it a sediment filter. That's exactly what it does. Now, there's different levels of this, that, and the other you can get into a filter. The one that we have is a six-stage system, which basically means it combines both the sediment filters. It is a reverse osmosis system, which is about as purifying as you can get. And in fact, it's so purifying that it strips all the minerals out. So our final six stage actually puts minerals back in using a bicarbonate block uh, that so that it uses, basically makes it like mineral water, puts the minerals back into your water. In fact, a little bit of a thing, if for some reason every single bit of water that you ingested from both food and water were demineralized, it actually would harm the body. The body actually does need that mineralized water. If it doesn't get the minerals through the water, it actually will start leaching it out of your bones. So drinking pure reverse osmosis water without that mineralization block is actually not healthy for you. We interrupt this long video to make an even longer video because... In an attempt to avoid the comment section blowing up, I need to clarify what we just got through saying. Now in there, I made the comment that if all of your water coming from food and drink has no minerals, it's bad for you. The fact is that 99.9% .9 of the world out there, you're getting all of your minerals from your food. Very little is coming from what you drink. As long as you're getting good mineral intake from your food, drinking demineralized water is not going to hurt you. It's only if basically you're not getting any other mineral intake any other way, then yes, drinking demineralized water is bad. Uh, the World Health Organization even has a document out there talking about some of the potential dangers that goes deeper into it. If you really get bored and want to go read some snooze fest documentation, uh, we'll put a link down there just so you can go read it for yourself. And I don't think they would ever sell a reverse osmosis system that didn't put minerals back in. Well, I think early on some of them didn't. Uh, everyone complained and now they all have mineral sticks on them. Huh. So yes, my apologies for the extra length on this video, but I can either cover it in two minutes here or spend days responding to this comment. It's not bad for you. Yeah, I know. This system comes with changeable filters and you're supposed to change them, I think, every six months roughly. We usually do ours about once a year and right now because of all the pandemic stuff, we have gone pretty much about two years almost now. So ours is well past the time where I would change these. Let's get into it and I will basically sort of step you through the process of what this looks like, how you change it, and what these different filters are and what they do. So the way our system works, it has its own faucet up here on the sink. 
uh, for dispensing the water. Just a basic little water system. And the entire filter system actually sits underneath. So it basically consists of this six stage filter system against the wall and a tank which actually holds the water. Because reverse osmosis is a slower type of filter, you actually need this tank to build up the water to then push out of that faucet. Where a standard, just a sediment or a carbon filter, the water just runs right through it and you can kind of use those more real time. Any reverse osmosis system, you're going to have this tank system. Now, in theory, I could just turn the water off on the tank, disconnect the hoses from it to pull this out, but you have to run two tanks of water through the system to flush it out when you do change your filters. So I figure it's going to be a good idea to go ahead and drain this anyway. That way I can run that new water through it. I like to actually completely pull it out, get it up above the counter and do all of my work above. So for now, First step, we're gonna go ahead and turn the water off. It has its own supply over here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. And a pro tip, when you have water valves in your house, it's a good idea to exercise them every so often. These are 90 degree turns to turn them off, so 90 degrees. This is now turned off. Now, since this is good filtered water, she's gonna go ahead and jar up all the stuff that is in that tank just to go ahead and keep it from being completely wasted. We have a pressure tank downstairs, but with an extra pressure tank up here, it kind of gives you a little bit of extra supply of water if the power goes out. If I know that there's a storm coming, I'll fill up jars like this before the storm gets here so that the tank has a chance to fill back up. And then, of course, as yeah, the, the pressure's tank. going down, so we're starting to get down to a dribble. I wasn't planning on making an ASMR video. Okay, and as you see, the red line is basically the end line, so it sort of goes up and into the very first stage of the system. Once it goes all the way through, it comes out of the yellow line and into the tank. So basically what I'm going to do is disconnect the red and the yellow line from the whole system here and that way I can go ahead and pull it completely out from underneath and yeah, make it easier to work on. Now these are very simple to remove. It's basically a little push and pull. All you do is push in the base of this connector and then pull the hose out. I went ahead and pulled this out from underneath there so I can go ahead and again I basically just push in this little piece and just Pull the line out since we've still got a little pressure in there. And if you're smart, you'll use a. Yes, sitting in here in the pan, there's, the hoses have enough length. I was able to do this. I bet if I turn the valve off on the tank, it'll stop. I'm going to push up, pull down, and the hose is out. So, the way a reverse osmosis system works. It has a membrane, the water kind of goes up, hits it a certain amount, kind of osmosis is, 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 is through, and you wind up with wastewater. So this actually has to have a waste drain that ties into your plumbing system, into your drain. There's a third one that's clear one that also has to be removed. Push in, pull out. Osmosi? This one actually goes up to the uh, faucet itself. And whenever you're doing this, take pictures. The filters do not have any kind of color codes written on them. Oh, the red goes here, the yellow goes here. The black one actually goes to the drain. I, I like these little things here because they kind of just fold up. So here's where the black one goes. And let's get this block out of the way. It's one reason why we like filming our projects so that if we're having trouble when we put things back together, we have okay. evidence. It's a six stage system. Water comes in, goes through stage one, stage two, stage three, comes out of three, comes into this water block, which then goes into stage four. Stage four comes out, goes into stage five, which then goes into stage six, which then goes into the out the system. The water goes into your tank without the carbonate. And then when you turn your faucet on, it pushes it out of the tank through the carbonate filter and then out to your drinking supply. And right now, while we have this thing sitting 
underneath our sink. My goal is eventually get it into the basement, actually wall mounted. It's the basement, it's a concrete floor. If the water spills out, not a big deal. Also easier to work around it. I can have it mounted up higher. Then run the lines through the floor and up to the faucet and to the fridge, the water system, and the ice maker. Ooh. All of these individual filters are gonna to have to have a lot of this stuff disconnected. So I'm gonna actually pull off more and more of these hoses. While this thing is sort of finishing dripping out a little bit, let me go ahead and show you what the filters look like. Funny story, they call it freedrinkingwater.com. No, you put filters in it once a year. The filters are a hundred bucks. It's a hundred dollars a year, water.com. <laughs> But hey, it's still, I mean, for, for what you get, peace of mind, it, to me, it's well worth the money to... Uh, no, no, it's worth the money to him, not to hear me moan about it. That's kind of what I meant. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you order a replacement water filter kit. Uh, this is from the Zon. It basically is just a box with each of the filters. The filters come in basically they're looking very much like the ones that are in there at least the main ones on top. This one will actually go inside of a unit. And then there's the three that go in toward the bottom. So basically what it is, is you've got your stage one, stage two, and stage three, and they are actually labeled 10 micron nominal blah, 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 10 inch coconut carbon filter. Nailed it. Okay, so once you open the box up, these are, it, it, it's a quick little, there's not a lot to these things. It doesn't get much simpler than this. As long as you've got something that you know how to plug each line back in, you're good to go. Not going to be a problem. Really, all you got to know is once we open these up, whatever's in there, it's going to look like these. So I forget exactly which one is stage one. I think it's, well, see, you think sediment would be first. So you would think it would be one, two, three. So yeah, stage one and stage two are 10 micron chlorine taste odor reduction coconut based carbon block 10 inch industry standard size so your first two stages are basically the exact same filter and it filters down to a 10 micron level how big is a micron bigger than a macron <laughs> macaroon what about macaroon? <laughs> macaroon is what was actually popping into my head just I was like... okay it turns out it actually is right here in the manual on the on this little sheet that comes with it and it's basically remember stage two and three use the same carbon filters so yes the it is correct it, and it makes sense generally you're going to go through a sediment filter first to remove all the sand and dirt type stuff and then you start doing more of your stuff that matters is taste and everything else so yes the sediment filter is first and the two carbon filters are for stage two and stage three it is weird that they are a larger size but eh, i mean it, it is what it is so at this point we know what goes where once it leaves the third stage then it's going to actually filter through the reverse osmosis membrane that is this fancy little thing here and where these other two come as a complete filter, this one you actually have to open this unit up and swap this out on the inside. Once it goes through this, it goes through an additional five micron coconut carbon filter. This is an additional taste remover to just get the final taste, you know, anything bad out of the taste. So it's just an additional carbon filter. And last but not least from there, the water goes into your calcite remineralization block so this is our stage six which basically puts the minerals back in these two you basically pull the things off plug them right up in line with the ones that are in there without further ado let's go ahead and start getting this thing completely disassembled so we can get it all cleaned up so this was the one where the line came into so we're just, i'm just going to start here it just everything just kind of clicks into place pops right out and i am going to go ahead and disconnect as you see, she kind of leaks and drips for a while. Same thing, push in, pull out. Lay that hose right there. Pull those off. Pull this T out. Set that one down. And then pull these off. And now we are down to the actual membrane this one i've got to pull completely out because i got to pull this off to actually take that apart 
And voila. It's peeing. So this little unit kind of came out right here. So I've disconnected this and I'm going to just kind of set this to the side. And right now we're down to just the first three stage filters of the system. Okay, so the system comes with two different wrenches. The one, two, and three stage. Basically, it's this wrench right here. And it's kind of a thing where it hooks and pushes. So one way for on, the other way for off. Normal thing. So I need to, to get it off. Okay, so that one's loose. <laughs> It's kind of hard to film and not be in the shot. I couldn't get a good hold on it. So, hey, stage one is loose. Let's see if we can do the other two a little bit less noisily. <laughs> I think it's time to pull my pan back out. We're probably going to have to actually take the other one off to get to that final one. So, we got the two outsides. Let's go ahead and... Oh, that looks disgusting. I'm glad that I did not um, dry that pan and put it back up. Okay, now I got the first three stages off. Huh, so according to this, I did send it to that one first. So it does go through the sediment filter first, it looks like. Well, yeah, but did you just do it backwards last time? <laughs> that thought it did cross my mind. So changing stages one, two, and three, free filters should be changed at least every six to 12 months. Naturally, I went with 12. Naturally, you went with 24. So you actually can taste when the mineral block wears off. He doesn't use that water. He uses the water from the fridge. Yeah, when I'm making tea, I'll use water from there. That's about the only time. I mean, I feel like you would have put it in the order. That yeah, I would have put it in there exactly the way they came out. Now, what's disgusting is the slimy oh. layer built Ooh. up on top. That is disgusting. Stage one. Ooh. Yes, this used to be as white as the other one. You can kind of see how white it looks down toward the bottom. Oh, what does it look inside? So, I mean, it's a little bit okay. kind of grungy. It's not horrible in here, but I am going to actually disinfect this with bleach and clean it out. Uh, this O-ring right here, I usually go ahead and pull these completely out and you use, I call it food grade Vaseline, but it's basically just Vaseline to lube this to put it back in. Same thing, we're gonna go ahead and pull this filter out. These don't really look much different because it's a carbon filter. Most of your stuff got caught by that other one. And it looks about the same on the inside. I can probably put on a shirt I don't care about. Hey, you have a Duke shirt laying around anywhere? No, but we've got the shirt where you've got a cat licking a... Oh, the Christmas shirt. Is it important that the gasket come out each time? <sighs> Sediment can get down in behind there. I personally like to make sure I completely get it out, completely clean it up. Ta-da. So I'm going to clean this up. I like to feel the gasket, see? Because the last thing you want is for your gasket to wind up breaking one day and running water all over your house. So if it's getting brittle and dry, it's good to know beforehand. This O-ring feels a little gummy. I may actually look at replacing these the next time, if not even this time. Sir, you are not... You are not leaving my, my kitchen like this for, let's face it, a week, sir. That O-ring is starting to get a, like a, a gummy rubber feel, like the rubber is starting to come apart. And that's probably a good sign that it needs to be replaced. But it should be fine until we replace them again. Yeah, like I think it'll be fine this time. Oh, no, the battery. Seriously? It's a brand new battery. It's a Sony. Duh. I'm going to go ahead and... A wrench. I love those. I think we got those on Amazon. See, the problem is it's been on for longer than normal. There we go. So there's the ring from the cap. It's actually got double ringed. Ah, there we go. One yeah. reverse osmosis membrane. Get my uh, O-ring toothpick. Well, it's like every project, like uh, everything you film for YouTube, it's like it takes 10 times longer to film it than if you just did the job. I mean, it's hard to see on camera, but she's nice and clean in there now. So at this point, everything is apart. 
Ooh, and with the exception of wiping this out, everything has been cleaned and sanitized. Okay, everything is apart, everything has been cleaned, and everything has been sanitized. Now technically, in the instructions that they send you, they say clean it with soap and water. I prefer to go ahead and do a bleach sanitization, just personal preference. And to be honest, I probably mixed it a little bit stronger today than I normally would. It's because he was trying to mess up his Christmas shirt. I'm trying to mess this dang shirt up. And, and I've no changed bleach. the oil in this thing. No bleach. Nothing. Thing. So while we were sanitizing everything, I did also pull this little piece off here and sanitize that as well. Part of the manufacturer, technically this is the only thing you're actually supposed to sanitize. Chlorine bleach directly applied to the actual RO filter can damage it, which is one reason whenever you see me doing it, even though it doesn't tell me to sanitize the earlier parts, I go ahead and do it. And I also made sure that when I was done, I completely let them rinse and completely dry before reassembling everything to make sure all the chlorine had evaporated and was out of the system. And I went ahead and ordered three O-rings for replacements. I think they're good enough. They're not that gummy, but they're gummy enough that I wanna have them on hand so that if I suddenly see something start leaking or the next time I take it apart, I'm gonna go ahead and have them. Also, I mentioned earlier, like when I'm doing mine, I just use Vaseline on my gaskets. If you buy the actual factory Apex rings, they are going to come with something called Molly Coat 111. It's a specialty brand of lube designed for O-rings. And it's $25 a tube if you buy an actual tube of it. If you buy the rings from APEC, it comes with a little itty bitty little packet just enough for that. I've always just used Vaseline on mine. I have never had a problem out of it. I will keep doing it. Could I be damaging something? Who knows? Is that the reason why it might be gummy? Well, I use it on these. These feel perfectly fine. Funny story too, those three, all over Amazon. Knockoffs, all over Amazon. These, couldn't find them anywhere. It's almost like they know those wear out. They get them from somewhere else and the rubber's not as good. These are interesting. They look to be the same size. One looks like it's a little bit thicker than the other. And I'm pretty sure the thicker one actually goes on the inside of the cup. And the thinner one is what actually goes on the outside of the reverse osmosis one. So the way I apply it is just a little bit on the finger and then I just kind of run it through. Just enough to get it a little bit of a coating on each of the rings. Inside the cup and place it in there and just kind of seat it around. Thicker ring on the outside. Thinner. Thinner ring on the outside and there we go. So I'm also putting just a little bit of lubricant on the O-rings on the bottom here, as well as the top one. Uh, when this goes back in, the double O-ring goes in first toward the bottom with this little piece at the top. If it doesn't go in the correct way, it will not work. It won't Which... work correctly. So now we're just going to tighten everything back up. Gaskets are feeling good. Everything is seating properly. Important! The membrane cannot filter water if it's inserted in the wrong direction. This should be leak proof and at this point this one is good to go. Now these other two they basically have these little rubber grommets in the end that have to be pulled out before you can use them. They usually put them in the correct way with that piece sticking out Makes it a lot easier to get off. Somebody put these in backwards. See, this one's correct. Okay, so these two, we've got that out. These are ready to go back in. Now I'm going to go ahead and unwrap the three first stage filters, pre-filters. This one's just going to flop down in here. This is just me. This is the way I like to do things. Just a wee little bit on the rubber seating surfaces of the carbon filters almost non-existent level of oil from the Vaseline. Less than you would use on your lips. Honestly, probably. These do not have any kind of directionality. There is a little thing at the bottom. You want to make sure it's centered over top of that. It won't go in there if it's not. So, I have found that it is best to install them back this way. If you do it sideways or if you try putting the thing on first, that piece at the bottom I was talking about, it's hard to get lined up. 
And this is stage one, the one that was white. Oh. What did he forget, y'all? All that talking about overing and I almost forgot to put it in. Now, I just wrote a little bit of a cheat, long story short, to get the wrench on there, the one in the center, the other two will get in the way. It's actually easy to put the center one on first. So, middle one first. Middle one first. That looks hysterical. It looks like scrat. <laughs> kind of does, two eyes and a long snout. If you're ordering filters and you have one of these already, this new design that has like this triple ridge with one a little bit thicker, this is model B. The older ones had just a single ridge down the center. That is model A. So if you're ordering the O-rings for these, you have to put in which one you have. This model here is model B. Third stage tightened. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now that the first three stages are there, I like to get it as dry in all these little nooks and crannies and crevices as I can because once it's together and you power it and you put the water pressure to it, you don't want to be seeing some water and think, is that a leak? As we were saying before, the actual RO is kind of where everything else is based off of. Just one more time. I want to make sure she's good and tight. And be careful with these. You can break these. The knobs. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. These things that click them all together, two of them, they're fatter than the others. So these are the ones that are going to click onto here to hold our next stage. And I might as well go ahead and click this contraption. Looks like a spider. Back in. Crab. It looks like a crab. This is usually where you're going to have to refer to your original chart to see exactly who connects to who. I just like to double check behind myself and make sure. This is actually labeled N over here on stage one. That is going to be the line that comes off of your water line. In this case, that one was the red. So the red's going to go into here. N's also pointing down. Out is pointing up. This is going to go to your fourth stage. So the fourth stage is your actual RO filter, but it actually connects through this little contraption right here. Now, you'll notice there's this white line that's kind of sitting right down here, right by that one. So it's like, huh, what are the chances? Chances are pretty good. Because also, you'll notice the other side of it sitting right up here by your RO filter as well. So, that's going to go into there. And that one's going to go into there. So the two solid white lines go into the big scrap-looking nose. And I like to make sure everything's kind of lined up so that there's no stress or like, you know, it's a nice straight flow in. Yes, here we go. One, two, three, out through this and into the other side. And if you forgot to take your pictures, uh, the, uh, it actually does come with a pretty good photo showing you all the parts. Not the greatest in the world. Doing your own is definitely going to be better. But if you do forget anything, it is kind of here how everything connects back. But your own picture, you'll be able to see colors. Yeah, of... like color would make this so much easier. So for this next part, you'll notice we basically have two of the uh, lines out right here. This clear line actually goes up to our top into this blue. The bottom white one down here is actually going to go to the black line from earlier, the waste. So the way this RO works is your clean water is going to come out here. Your waste water that it actually has to drain is going to come out of here. So you essentially have one input into the system, and then you've got two outputs, one for clean, one for waste. And the one on the bottom down here is your waste. Okay, so now we have the water coming out of this. We go through the block comes down to here and this is going to be the input for stage number five. Five is a second carbon filter. Okay and this is our second carbon filter and you'll always notice these have flow written on them so you can always tell basically uh, which way the water goes so this would be wrong. It has to flip around this way and on the other side the labels kind of all look normal. I'll show you that here in a minute but this one's going to be the next one that comes up into our system. Clicks into place and 
just plugs in right there on that end. One interesting thing with ours, I've noticed that the newer one, I don't know if mine's kind of worn out after five years, but it clicks in, but barely, so it's not really as tight as it used to be. Okay, on the back side of this, we have that little U-shaped tube from earlier that's going to go into there. We're going to click on, and we're going to click in, same thing, flow rate, out to in. This is going to be the next phase of that one, and she's going to click into here. Now this just kind of folds down into a nice little triangular shape. So at this point, everything is assembled except for connecting the actual lines. Again, the red hose from the water supply is going to come into here. The faucet itself is going to connect in on this one here. The yellow line from the tank will connect into here, and the wastewater will connect in over here. So at this point, everything is back together. Everything is ready to go back in and check for leaks, which is the most nerve wracking part. Now, just like before, I'm going to set the unit out here in a pan, pull the lines out, connect them in, bring the water back on and see if anything is leaking out here. So red line to our input. So the black line has gone into our waste and the yellow line into this little T-joint right here. Everybody's connected. It's time to find out what I did wrong, if anything. I'm doing it a slow amount. I didn't open it wide open, kind of letting the water trickle in. Oh, I did forget to connect the faucet, but this one actually doesn't matter at this point. And looks like I do have a leak. So now I need to go here and address this. Oh, it's the geyser that happened. It's all over his face. I'm sorry, it's not funny. It's very funny. Okay, let's try this again. I think we may have got it this time. Now I'm purging the air out of the system. Okay, so far, no additional leaks since that first one that I found. So far, everything is dry. Currently, we are waiting for the tank to fill up so that we can drain it out. And to give you an idea of why you need to do this, this will give you an idea of... It's basically like a milkshake. It's very milky, very, very not clean water right now. So we'll let that build up to a full tank, drain it out, and then we'll tuck everything back up, do a final leak check, and everything will be ready to go. Basically, the system is still running. Even though you don't really hear anything, there's a stream of water going into the drain, and that is from the RO filter. As we were saying earlier, it has basically wastewater. The water that isn't done gets sent out into the pipes. The actual process without filming it, which takes up a lot of time trying to set things up and record it, I say I can usually change these out in probably about an hour. That includes all the cleanup and everything else and doing it the right way. So yeah, if you decide to go with one of these systems, you're looking at about an hour every year to 18 months to kind of get everything swapped out and cleaned up and ready to go. I would like to say one thing about the water that comes out after it's changed. Okay. <laughs> um, so we do let one full or two full tanks come out of the system. However, even after that, sometimes just a little bit, it looks a little bit milky, milky, a little yeah. bit cloudy. And so all I do is I just, it's not moonshine. It's not. It, I, it would like apple pie. If it will. I just put it in there. But it does clear up. Yeah, the instructions say, I think, one tank. We used to do about two. Really, just do it to let it... It's the bicarbonate. It's basically it's bicarbonate. Bicarbonate of soda. It's basically a white powder, but it's in some kind of a form inside of that filter. So, yeah, while it's cleaning it out, it just looks a little bit whitish milk. It's not going to hurt you. I mean... I just run that in the sink. Yeah, when it's very bit. new, because it's basically bubbles. Like, it, like, sometimes you put it in something and then just shake it up. Then all the bubbles will come out and it'll clear right up. What do you mean you lost my closeout footage and I got to do it again? You didn't film any closeout footage. Oh, oops. 
Okay, everyone, we hope you actually found that video, if, if nothing else, enjoyable, hopefully a little bit of informative, and it may give you some clues, hints, tricks, tips of how you can do your own. And if you're thinking about getting one of these, it will show you kind of what you'll be up against. That's one reason we actually do ours at about an 18-month interval on um, that way, because I can take everything apart and replace all the filters at one time. Some of them say, hey, you can go two years, some say six months. I don't really feel like going through that every six months, basically, to do the one at the six and the one at the 12. The, so yeah, and for us, about a year to 18 months, we change everyone at one time. And if you made it this far, consider subscribing. Doesn't cost you anything, helps us out greatly. And you can help guide the direction of this channel and what kind of stuff we show.